Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice radio. So today, we're going to be looking at a rather exciting new item card, which is going to be coming out in the Transformers TCG in Unbroken Bonds. It's Frost Ice Axe. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Not something that I was expecting to be getting anytime soon, and I'm willing to bet not one that was on your radar. Now, our translation here comes from the lovely David Hockman over at LimitlessCCG.com slash translations. And it says, look at the top three cards of your opponent's deck. Choose two of them and shuffle them back into your opponent's deck. Then put the other card on top of your opponent's deck. Basically, you get to look at the top three cards of your opponent's deck here and fix their top deck. And you could have an awful awful lot of fun with this one it is an item card and it is disruptive and you could stop your opponent now there are some fairly obvious ones here so let's say for argument's sake your opponent needs that guzma to win the game and look we've all been there we've all had these games where next person to draw a guzma wins so what you do is you play a frost ice axe and you stop your opponent drawing guzma and not only do you get the Guzma out of the top three cards of their deck, but you fix their top deck so you know they're drawing a basic fire energy, or whatever it might be. You know they're not drawing Guzma. Because that's the other thing about this card. It's not just fixing their top deck, although fixing their top deck can be kind of funny. It is that if you find a card you know they want, you shuffle it back in their deck. And look, it could end up anywhere in the deck except on top it could end up being in the second position in their deck it could be the next to top card in their deck but as long as it's not the top card of their deck they're not going to draw it and maybe they're playing a zoroark deck and they can draw some extra cards or maybe they're playing pidgeotto and they can draw an extra card but the point is here that they're not drawing the card now they might draw the card but let's say for argument's sake they're playing a Zoroark deck they really need double colorless to attack but maybe one's prized and maybe one's ended up in a discard pile so they've only got two in their deck and you play a frost ice axe and you see that double colorless energy is one of the top three cards of their deck you shuffle it back in their deck and you put something like another Zoroark on top of their deck when they don't have a Zorua to evolve it into or evolve into it, I suppose, is more correct. And now, maybe they still get the double colorless energy. Because they're going to have at least one trade. But maybe they don't. And that's the thing. If they've got three cards, they draw one at the beginning of their turn. They use a trade. They are going to draw the top three cards of their deck. So if there's a double colorless in the top three cards, there's no if, buts, or maybes here. They are going to get that card. Maybe you stop them, maybe you don't. But what you do do here is you take away the certainty. Yeah, there's still a chance they have it, but wouldn't you rather give them a chance of having it rather than guaranteeing they have it? The other thing you can do here, which is so good, you can give them a crummy top deck. You can make sure that they are not top deck in the card they want to top deck. So I already gave you the example of giving them a Zoroark when there's no Zorua on their bench. But how about giving them a basic Pokemon when their bench is full? How about giving them some random card when you know they want to play a Lily? So you just give them a card you know they can't play, which means they're going to be drawing one fewer card with Lily. How about feeding them a supporter card when you know they've got to play an Ace Roller next turn? So you're giving them a card they're not going to be able to play. And it's this double whammy of disruption here. It is giving them a crummy top deck while making sure that two cards that they may have wanted are back in their deck. Now, there is a potential downside here, and that is you could be taking two cards they really didn't want, shuffling them back into their deck, and giving them better cards in the second and third slot. That's a risk you take, but hopefully, at least if you do that, you are giving them a crummy top deck. And if you can catch your opponent after a Macargo, 
This is really fun. Macargo lets you search your deck for any card and put it on top of your deck. So if they've got Macargo, but they don't have something like Pidgeotto to immediately draw the card, and I've done this in Gramble many a time, you can't draw the card right now, but it's all right. Whack it on top of your deck, you know you're going to top deck it next turn. So you can look at the top three, shuffle two of them, including the card you know they want back into their deck, and give them a crummy top deck. And Granbull would be a really, really good deck to use this against. Because Granbull relies on having zero cards in hand. And Granbull needs to be able to empty their hand. And there are certain cards that you really don't want to draw in a Granbull deck. You really don't want to draw a second energy because you just can't get rid of it very easily. You really don't want to draw something like a Ditto Prism Star if you've got a full bench because you're not able to bench it. You don't want to draw a Shrine of Punishment when you've already got a Shrine of Punishment in play because you're not going to be able to play down a second identical stadium. And now you get to make them draw into it. And look, it's only the top three cards of their deck. It's not like you can search their deck and put any card you like on top. It is just the top three cards. And we get to the stage here where maybe this isn't quite good enough. You've often, I assume, heard the phrase 61st card in the deck. It is a card you, you'd like to play, ideally... But you're limited to 60 cards in your deck. There's only so much you can actually put in. So you end up leaving it to the side. And this seems to me very much like a 61st card. But it will fit nicely in disruption decks. So if anyone out there is playing Sylveon, for instance. Yeah. Sylveon lets you search your deck for any free cards. Incidentally, Sylveon would be a great counter to this, but you could put this into Sylveon. Put a couple of these in, and you don't need to play a million of them, but what you can do is just play a couple of these so that if your opponent is going to have a good top deck, you can roll with it. Or if your opponent is really desperately searching for something like a double colorless energy, you can wait a couple of turns, and every turn they don't draw double colorless energy they, in theory, must be getting closer to drawing it. So you give it a couple of turns, and then you drop this, mess with their top deck, and hopefully get that double colorless back into their deck. Or while we're talking Sylveon, how about Sylveon and Gardevoir? You see, Sylveon and Gardevoir is a great, great deck over in Japan at the moment. Two fairy, one colorless energy, 150, and move as much energy as you like to your bench Pokemon. Sweet. And then, of course, you got the GX attack, 3 Fairy Energy, 200, but 6 Fairy Energy, 200, and your opponent shuffles their hand into their deck. And then what you do is you play around with Fairy Charm, so you might use Fairy Charm UB, and if you're against something like a Blacephalon deck, they can't damage you. So what are they going to want to do? They're going to want to go for their Field Blower. So you want to stop them getting their Field Blower. This will help. Something like this, where you put your opponent down to a zero-card hand, this becomes a really nice card, because you essentially just fix your opponent's top deck every turn. You make sure that your opponent's not drawing anything, and then you guarantee they're not getting their field blower. And remember, one of the biggest counters to this, your, your opponent just plays a Cynthia, or draws a bunch of cards. And if your opponent can draw a bunch of cards, it doesn't really matter what their top deck is, because they can get around it, and then they can get back and start rolling. But if you put them in a zero-card hand, and then start fixing their top deck, oh lordy, this could be fun. This is a very, very niche item card. I don't think this is going to be the kind of card where people go, oh, I've got 58 cards in my deck. Let's chuck a couple of Frost Ice Axe in. No. I don't think that's how this works. But I think there are some disruption decks, or some decks like Sylveon and Gardevoir, which are very specialized decks that can use this in very specific ways. And I think for those decks, this is going to be really cool. So I'm going to be giving it free Wossies, because I think you need a couple copies in your binder, just in case you ever want to chuck this into a deck. And I think there are some where you would. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the very definition 
of a free WASI card. But I would very much like to know what you think about this. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. But please do remember the rule, ladies and gentlemen. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the WASI, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all of that head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash plays where we talk about non-pokemon games but by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves till next time thank you very much for watching my name is ross and you've been watching ptcg radio